And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Public Hero. A few years ago, Cartwright Pictures had been a small, independent movie studio. Today, it was a byword for quality production. Most observers agreed the studio's success was due to the ability of its attractive owner, Elaine Cartwright. Publicity cameraman Jeff Lambert was of a different opinion. He gave credit to his own talent. But lack of credit had not made Jeff bitter, for he was engaged to Elaine Cartwright, and once married... He was certain he'd gain control of the business. But now, like a bolt from the blue, a formal, tight letter from Elaine has changed the picture, hasn't it, Jeff? A letter which sends you hurrying across the lot to her office. I don't get it, Elaine. Not too long ago, we were talking about getting married. I know. But it wouldn't work, Jeff. Yesterday, I decided to end everything now, so I wrote to you. I thought that would be better for both of us. Was that any reason to fire me without notice? You're getting an extra month's pay, Jeff. You've changed, Elaine. Ever since you met this big shot, Neil Reynolds, you've been different. I expect I have. All that stuff about loving me forever, that was a lot of hooey. Not hooey, Jeff. I just know that if I married you, I'd be unhappy. I finally realized you'd never change. What do you mean by that? You're not in love with me. You're in love with Cartwright Productions and the half interest you thought you'd get after we were married. Baby, you don't really believe that. How could you even think that... Oh, I know. It's Reynolds. He put this idea into your head, didn't he? I'm going to marry Neil Reynolds. Ma marry? When we're in love with one another? You're too selfish to be in love with anyone, Jeff, except yourself. You proved that with Ann Mason. What's Ann got to do you with... You thought she was going to be a famous actress. Then when the studio dropped her option, you decided you couldn't be bothered. That was different. I wasn't in love with Ann Mason. I am in love with you. And you're in love with me. You can't walk out on me, Elaine. You don't even want to. But I do. And I am. We're finished. No. We'll never be finished. Come here. No, Jeff. Please, no. I don't... <sighs> Still insist everything is over? No, please, Jeff. I... I've made up my mind. You can't change it. Okay, Elaine. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Only I have an idea you're going to be sorry and lonesome. When you are, give me a ring. We'll take up just where we left off. You try to carry it off lightly, don't you, Jeff? With a gay remark. But inside, you're trembling. Because there's something in Elaine's tone. It isn't going to be easy, is it, Jeff, giving up Elaine? Not to mention the assured eventual partnership in the Cartwright Studios. But you've got to sit tight, wait Elaine out. And part of doing that includes taking another job for a while on one of the city papers as a news photographer. It's about a week later that you're having lunch in a small restaurant when you meet another old friend. Well, well, well. So Elaine Cartwright finally caught up to our boy one day. Well, Ann Mason. Yes, little Annie Mason. Still around. She's seen the papers, too. Papers? 
Mm-hmm. Read, sweet boy. What? Uh, Neil Reynolds, youthful financial wizard, president of H.R. Mining Company, Reynolds Productions, Reynolds Construction Co. Reveals engagement to Elaine Cartwright, head of Cartwright Productions. Kind of sudden, wasn't it, darling? Not at all, no. I've known about it for some time. Oh, don't kid me. Enjoying yourself, aren't you? No, I'm... I'm sorry for you. You know the way I feel about you. Well, that's all over, Anne. I told you months ago. Well, that's what you said, but I don't believe it. I think you switched to Elaine for what you could get out of her. I should hate you for it, but I don't... Well, you're wrong, Anne. I love Elaine. Really? Then it's pretty much a one-sided affair, isn't it, darling? Oh, skip it, will you? See you around, Anne. Right now I've got a date with a double scotch. As you walk away from Ann Mason, you glance again at the headlines. Read the paragraphs underneath. Learn that Elaine is in San Francisco, where she'll stay at the home of Neil Reynolds' parents until the wedding, which is just one week off. But it's not going to take place if you can prevent it, is it, Jeff? Elaine is the only girl you ever really cared for, and you also want the things marriage to her would bring. You just can't believe she's really in love with Neil Reynolds and decide to see her once more. The next day, you leave for San Francisco by plane. Phone Elaine at the Reynolds residence. And hurry out to see her. You shouldn't have come here, Jeff. I had to, Elaine. When a guy loves a gal like I do, you... What's the use of going over all that again? Because I love you. Give me another chance, I'll prove it. I told you, Jeff, You don't have to make up your mind now, honey. Think it over. That's all I ask. Before it's too late. I don't have to think it over, Jeff. Still Neil Reynolds? Yes. But, Elaine, it's no good. You don't love him. Neil knows I'm not in love with him in the sense I thought I was in love with you. I've told him all about us, everything. Oh, you don't expect me to believe that. Maybe you didn't hear Elaine Lambert. She said she wanted you to leave. Neil. Hello, Reynolds. Glad to meet you. I have a couple of things I'd like to talk over with you. There's nothing to talk over, Lambert. I wouldn't be too sure. You're not married yet. We will be. Very soon. Maybe. Not if I can prevent it, however. You see, I happen to love Elaine. Please, Jeff. You also indicated that you'd enjoy going steady with the studio, Miss Cartwright owns. Oh, how crass. Okay, Reynolds, it's going to be an interesting war. Remember, all's fair, huh? I'll do anything I can to stop you from marrying Elaine. Anything. <laughs> If you're using this Labor Day weekend for a trip somewhere, here's a chance to have some extra fun making a little experiment. You've heard me say that signal ethyl is a real super fuel, scientifically engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. Well, just to see for yourself how right Marvin Miller is about that, how about using nothing but signal ethyl for the rest of your holiday driving? Then notice three things. As you touch the starter, notice how quickly signal ethyl makes your motor spring to life. As you step on the gas, notice that peppy signal ethyl pickup. And as you soar up hills and down highways, notice that smooth, quiet signal ethyl power. Wonderful, isn't it? So good, in fact, that I'm going to make a little bet. As you head back home from a day of really happy driving, I'll bet your name will already be on the growing list of motorists who won't be satisfied with anything less than the premium grade of the famous go-farther gasoline. Signal Ethel, that is. It seems terribly complete, doesn't it, Jeff? With Elaine Cartwright about to marry Neil Reynolds, your hopes to marry Elaine yourself and share ownership of her highly profitable picture studio seem destined to failure. There seems to be little left to do but leave and return to Los Angeles and forget the whole thing. You're preparing to check out of the hotel when a chance remark of a woman guest to the desk clerk arouses your interest. Yes. Mr. Reynolds feels the only correct thing to do is postpone the wedding plans because of the accident. Oh, I should think so. Uh, how many men were actually trapped? Fourteen. 
My husband said it was one of the worst cave-ins he's seen. Ah, terrible. Uh, here's your key, Mrs. Biglow. If there's anything you oh, want set up, why... Oh, Mr. Lambert, uh, something for you, sir? I couldn't help overhearing. You were talking about the Neil Reynolds tunnel job, a cave-in of some kind? Yes, uh, seems there's been an accident. Anything serious? Yes, from what the lady's husband said. That's a big project, you know. Cuts right through mountainous rocks, and when you think of any part of a thing like that giving away... Yeah, well, yeah, it could be rough. <laughs> it already is for 14 men. Mr. Reynolds hopes to get them out, but... Well, you know how those things are. Oh, uh, you checking out, sir? No. No, I was, but I think maybe I'd better get up to that tunnel site. Uh, get some pictures, you mean? Huh? Yeah, get some pictures. I think that's a good idea. For the moment, Elaine becomes secondary in your thoughts, doesn't she, Jeff? This trip to San Francisco has proved expensive. And a scoop on some news photos might prove profitable to you. You leave the hotel, rent a car, and drive rapidly north to the tunnel site. The scene is charged with a tense air of excitement, drama, because of the trapped men and the work being done to save them. It's slow, laborious work, and time is always against the workers in these situations. You move about the scene, getting pictures of the rescue workers, the derricks. And then as you pause to place a new plate in your camera... Jeff, what are you doing here? Huh? Oh, hello, Elaine. I thought you'd gone back to Los Angeles. Oh, I thought I'd stick around, take in the wedding. I understand it's been postponed. Yes. Makes the boyfriend look pretty noble, Elaine. Oh. Reynolds postpones own wedding to help workers he holds so dear, all that sort of thing. I can assure you that Neil has no such thought. Something wrong, Elaine? No, no, it's all right. What are you doing here, Lambert? Taking pictures for my paper. You don't mind, do you? Not if you stick to taking pictures. Stop annoying Elaine. He isn't annoying me, Neil. What about the men? Are they still... Uh, still inside. What happened, Reynolds? Mouth of the tunnel give way? Yeah, that's about it. They're all right. We don't spend too much time getting it opened up again. I'm going to climb down the ravine here and see if it'd be easier to dig in from this side. Neil, do you have to do it yourself? We're all working at it. Now, you keep back from the edge here, Elaine. This granite can fool you. Be careful. Now, uh, don't worry. With you waiting up here for me, I'll be back. Oh, and Lambert. Yeah? See that you can find your activities to photography. By all means. Matter of fact, I'm going to follow you along a ways. Yeah? Well, watch your footing. Yeah, I want a picture of the big boss giving his all for the boys. Now do what you like. Be careful not to get hurt. The words are difficult to manage, aren't they, Jeff? Because your mind is on something else. Yes. The moment you and Neil Reynolds disappear over the edge of the gorge and start working your way down to the caved-in mouth of the tunnel, you know that you've been handed an unusual opportunity. You're both out of sight of the workers and the crowd on the other side. The rocks are loose, very loose. You let Neil get farther ahead of you. And then as he doubles back, you find him almost directly below you and a huge, precariously balanced boulder. You look around, and when you're sure you're out of sight, you lean against the boulder and push. Feel the loose granite beneath your feet give way. The boulder starts to roll under your weight, and then it falls. Mr. Lambert, so you decided to wake up. What happened? Where, where am I? In the hospital. Oh. Oh, that was a very brave thing you did. Huh? Shouting out to Mr. Reynolds when that rock started to fall, then trying to keep it from hitting him by throwing yourself against it, risking your life to save his. Oh. Reynolds, was he pretty badly? Oh, no, he's perfectly fine. Heard you shout and leap clear. They finally got the men out of the tunnel, too. And you're right here in the papers with the rest of the heroes, Mr. Lambert. How does it feel? Hmm? Oh, great, just great. Of course it does. You're going to be all right yourself. No broken bones. The doctor just thought it best for you to remain here a day or so. I see. Now, if you feel up to it, there's uh, someone waiting to talk to you. Oh? Uh, uh, Miss Elaine Cartwright. Shall I tell her to come in? She's quite proud of what you did. Really? Well, yeah. 
Yeah, show the lady in, nurse. It's amazing, isn't it, Jeff? The way your sudden plan to destroy Neil Reynolds backfired. Everybody thinks that you tried to stop the boulder from falling to save Neil's life, particularly Elaine. You almost can't believe the change in her as she comes into the hospital room and sits beside you, looks at you as she talks. It's made me realize, Jeff, that I've misjudged you pretty badly. Forget it, Elaine. No. You risked your own life saving me, you. No, that's just for the news story. Simply did what any decent guy would do. Particularly a guy who... Well, who's awfully interested in somebody's happiness. I know, Jeff. I... I almost wish things could be different. I... Isn't too late, Elaine. Please, Jeff. Don't make me say anything right now. I'm mixed up. I understand. Don't have to do or say anything definitely like right. Thank you, Jeff. You're, well, pretty wonderful. <laughs> You're not so bad yourself. Really quite a surprise you're inviting me to lunch today, Reynolds. I wanted to discuss that interesting newspaper story about you, Lambert. They made you quite a hero. Oh, uh, look, Reynolds, I don't expect anything for what I did. I know, but I do. Here. Huh? Take a look at this. Well, what is it? I shouldn't think it would be necessary to explain to you. It's a picture, Lambert. Another photographer snapped that. I thought it was so interesting, I bought it from him. For my private collection. Well, but, but, but what it shows... It shows it... Mr. Jeff Lambert, public hero, leaning his shoulder against a rock and shoving hard. Just above the spot I was in at the time. All right, so you know. I know you tried to kill me. Yes. You haven't done anything about it. No, I haven't done anything about it. For the moment, I'm willing to let you remain a public hero. As to the future... Yeah... That's up to you. If you stay out of Elaine's life... Has she seen this? No, she still thinks you tried to save my life. And if you let her alone, she'll always think so. Why all the nobility? If you showed her this, you'd... she'd be finished with you, yes. But I'd never know for sure whether she married me because she thought you were a heel or because she thought I was the right guy for her. And that's the only way I wanted, Lambert. I see... Oh, there's no use tearing that print up. I bought the plates, too. Hmm. Incidentally, there's a couple of other shots even more interesting than this one. You've thought this out all the way, haven't you? All the way. Now you'd better start thinking things out. Okay. Okay, so I promise to get lost. What then? Do you hand over those plates to me? No, no. You'll have to show me you're going to behave, Lambert. Oh, ha. What can I do? That's your problem. Think about it. Something will come to you. Meanwhile, stay away from Elaine. Oh, sure, I'll do that. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Public Hero, I have some important things to attend to. Good afternoon. You watch him walk away, leave you, and you return to your hotel feeling as if the world is closing in around you until you catch sight of someone in the lobby. Someone who gets up quickly and hurries to your side. Anne! Hello, Jeff. Are you all right? Well, why shouldn't I be? Well, I heard the news broadcast, and they said you were in the hospital, but when oh. I went there, they told me you were here. No, I'm okay. It just shook me up a bit, that's all. Well, I drove up here the moment I heard. I'm registered here, too, Jeff. I've been waiting for you. Well, you shouldn't have bothered, Anne. Things aren't any different. Wait, maybe they are. No. Annie. Hmm? Annie, you you really do care for me, don't you? You know that. Like I told you, I'm a one-man woman, Jeff. And oh, it's so good to know that you're all right and to see you. Oh, Annie, you don't know how good it is to see you right now. Come on, honey, buy you a drink.
Well, that's it, Ann. I realized it, lying there in the hospital. You're worth a dozen Elaine Cartwrights. I tried to call you last night to tell you. But I, I was on my way up here. I guess so. Nobody answered the phone. I was glad afterwards. Glad? But I thought you said... And, and you, you won't want me after I tell you the truth about that accident. I'm no hero, Ann. Of course you are. No. No, that wasn't any accident out at the tunnel. I caused it all. What? You see, I... I tried to kill Neil Reynolds. Almost killed myself instead. Oh, Jeff. Oh, you didn't. You, you couldn't. It wasn't premeditated, just a sudden impulse. I'd, I'd give anything I've got if I hadn't done it. Well, I guess it took her a shock like that to wake me up. And you're really through with Elaine? You're the only thing I want, Anne. The only thing I need. If you still want me. I told you, darling, I... I'm a one-man woman. Oh, Anne. <laughs> Anne, we'll get out of here right away. Tonight. That is, if, if you'll drive down to Mexico with me, marry me, would you? Who would I? Just try me, darling. Good. You run on back to your room now and get a little rest. I've, uh, I, I've something to take care oh, of. Just don't let it hold us up, darling. No, no. On the contrary, it'll speed us on our way. Neil Reynolds? Yes? It's Jeff Lambert. Look, uh, will it convince you I'll stay away from Elaine if I tell you that I'm getting married tomorrow? It might, if I heard it from the girl. Okay, you can. Call her. She's here in the hotel, room 402, Miss Ann Mason. Ann Mason, room 402. Now, uh, once you're convinced, what about those pictures and camera plates? Send me your address after you're married. I'll mail them to you. Hmm. Okay, Reynolds, thanks. It's only partly perfect, isn't it, Jeff? Because unless you can find some other way to get those camera plates, you'll have to go through with a marriage to Anne. It's getting dark when you check out of the hotel, meet Anne, toss your luggage into the back of her car... Swing out of the city and wind your way along the lonely skyline drive, high over the sea. Jeff. Mm-hmm? Neil Reynolds phoned me. I, I went to see him. You went to see him? Mm-hmm. What'd you talk about? Oh, just us. Told him how long we've known each other. Oh, he was so nice, I invited him down to have a drink with us. But he couldn't make it. He'll be busy tonight. But he was convinced that you are a nice guy. How do you know? Well, they gave me this package. That it was a wedding present for you, Jeff. Made me promise not to give it to you until after we were married, though. He did? Mm-hmm. Well, Annie, you're a great little convincer. You know what's in that package, Ann? Well, I didn't ask. Prints and camera plates proving that I tried to kill Reynolds out at the tunnel. And now we've got them. I have them. Until we're married. Oh, but you're going to let me see them, aren't you? Just to be sure they're all there. Oh, I don't suppose that could do any harm. Oh. Uh, well, what are we stopping for? Oh, it's a nice view from here, Anne. Very nice. Especially from where I sit looking down at these plates. So that's it. Not giving them to you, Jeff. What? Huh? Hey, come back here. No. Oh, give me those plates. I... There. That's better. Take these prints along, too. Tear them up. Goodbye, Annie. Please, Jeff, please. Oh, you can't be this low. I'm not being low, baby. Just got some important things to attend to, alone. Don't worry about your car. I'm not stealing it. I'll leave it at the hotel garage in San Francisco. But you can't leave me out here. You're not stranded, baby. You can catch a bus a couple of blocks back. They run every 20 minutes. You're a good girl, Annie. You've put everything I need in the palm of my hand. If 
like most car owners, you're using this Labor Day holiday for a drive somewhere, you've been seeing a lot of signal service stations. So it occurred to me that you might like to know a little more about this friendly organization which brings you the Whistler. Well, first of all, signal products have always been sold through independently operated stations. The reason? Signal Oil Company believes that a man who has his own business just naturally takes a more personal interest in keeping you and your car happy. Secondly, because you want top quality products for your car, each individual signal station is backed by an organization which serves the many hundreds of signal dealers in seven western states with facilities to bring you every latest advance in petroleum science. Obviously, drivers must like this combination of signals personalized service plus fine quality signal products. When you consider how signal has grown and grown into an organization serving the entire West Coast from border to border. To see for yourself one of the good reasons for this increasing popularity, just try powering your car this weekend with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. The early morning was made more dreary by the thin layer of fog, the occasional screech of a gull moving effortlessly across the scene on the beach, the remains of an automobile which had plunged from the heights of Skyline Drive. The preliminary check had been made by the investigating officers of the highway patrol. The lone occupant identified, removed, and the officers were completing their report. Uh, well, Dave... Boy, this wreck out of here is going to be quite a deal. And just a waste of time, too. Beats me how fast some of these guys will drive on a mountain road, taking chances on smashing themselves to pieces. Yeah, but this one was unusual. The doc says the guy in this car wasn't killed in the crash. He was just knocked out. He was carrying some camera plates. They smashed up. Cut him pretty bad, and he bled to death during the night before we found him early this morning. The guy was a cameraman? Yeah. His name was in the papers the other day, uh, Jeff Lambert. Lambert? I read about him. He's quite a hero. Saved that big shot Neil Reynolds' life. Mm-hmm. I hope when Neil Reynolds reads about it, it doesn't spoil his honeymoon. Reynolds and Elaine Cartwright flew to Phoenix last night. Got married. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you that this weekend's heavy homeward-bound Labor Day traffic makes it even more important to drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Larry Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, Gigi Pearson, Stephen Chase, and Herbert Litton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Nancy Cleveland and Hazel Lytle. Music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for the Horace Height Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.